What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today's Friday, August 16th. Welcome to this week's video update where we will review all the trade alerts and positions. And before we do so, let's jump into the community and check out who got caught being hot this week. You know, each week, we like to recognize one member of the community for helping other traders. This week goes to an individual who uh, had a we had kind of a back and forth conversation this week. Uh, you know, when the when the markets are this volatile and you have a position that just moves crazy against you, like we have, like we've seen in bonds, you know, it starts to it starts to create some thoughts and concerns about, gosh, what if this thing just keeps going and going and going? We know that markets don't move in one direction forever, uh, but it's definitely, especially when you're when you're trading these uncovered option positions, like we do sometimes. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where you have to understand that keeping your position size small and, you know, staying mechanical, especially when things are volatile, is what you have to do. And so it was a great conversation with Mel Thomas. So please help me in congratulating Mel Thomas. Congrats, Mel. You got caught being hot. All right, let's go to the alerts for the week. And starting with Monday the 12th. So our first trade right out of the gate was a closing trade in SPX. So we had a weekly iron condor on in SPX. Uh, in SPX, uh, price moved down nicely right back into center of our range or close to center uh, that morning on on Monday, and that was the last trading day. So we went ahead and closed that out and booked a nice winner. It's twenty nine hundred dollar winner on that one. So good trade in SPX. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in Ford slash GC. So we just added an iron condor out in the October cycle with 44 days to expiration. And, and then we also have our, uh, at that point, we had our other iron condor in October as well. We ended up closing one side of that, which uh, I think is the next alert. Yeah, here we go. So uh, the next alert was a closing adjusting trade in gold where we closed out the put vertical side as price had breached the upside break even and still holding the uh, still holding the call side vertical on that piece. So now we've got a full iron condor and a half iron condor in GC, both of which are in the same cycle. So here is the short call vertical. You can see price is still outside the range. So we need a little bit of a movement down to get back into that range. If we take a look at a chart of gold, I mean, this thing's just been crazy strong. And uh, recently the implied volatility has really spiked along with the rest of the markets. So a uh, good time to be selling premium in gold. But if we can get just a little bit of a dip in gold, that'll help out that piece. And then in addition to that short call vertical, we've also got this full iron condor where you can see price is dead centered, got a little bit of profit, just waiting on some more theta decay before we take that off. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we had uh, we had a short call vertical on in IYR. Uh, it's still in August. It was our last position in August. Got down to three days to expiration, and so we just needed to exit. So we went ahead and closed that piece out, took a loss on that piece of the trade, and then we're still holding our other full iron condor out in the SEP cycle. So let's take a look at that one. IYR, uh, you can see price is hanging out right here. Uh, still within range, could use some downside movement uh, and, you know, get back to center here and just some more time to pass in IYR. Next trade was a closing trade in KRE. So we had a short strangle on a KRE, booked over 30% of max profit in just eight days. Put that on when implied volatility really spiked, had a little bit of a contraction, but enough to, uh, to book 30% of max profit on that one. So good quick trade in KRE. Next trade, we did a rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So these are our bonds that we were talking about. These things have been just crazy to the upside. Uh, in this case, we just simply rolled up our puts. So as price moved higher and there's very, uh, very little value left in those puts, we just adjusted those up from 156 up to 162. We stayed in that October cycle because there's still 37 days to expiration. So we now have the 162 puts and the 151 call. So it's an inverted short strangle. And then we also have our other short strangle that we have not adjusted uh, in that October cycle as well. So let's take a look at both of those pieces. Uh, here's the one that we have not adjusted yet. And you can see price is hanging out right here, almost 
almost at the short strike, but not quite. If we take a look at how much value we've got in those puts, we've got uh, we've got a decent amount left here. So we're not looking to roll those puts up quite yet. But if price does continue higher into early next week, we'll do the same thing. We'll just roll those puts up. And then uh, our other piece here, the inverted strangle. Now what you'll see here is, is price is uh, out of our range here. And you can see after the roll on the, on the chart here, it's, it's showing it's actually below the zero line. Uh, when you when you've rolled that inverted, uh, you can get to that point. Now what we'll do is we'll we'll adjust these strikes as we get closer to that 21 days to expiration. So another uh, 14 days, and uh, and we'll roll that out to the next cycle. Collect another credit. Hopefully we can get some stability and some you know just cyclicality in this. But when you have a huge move like that uh, in bonds and and. You know, on this chart, you may be thinking, well, that, you know, we see that in other things all the time, but bonds usually don't move that much. And so, uh, you know, based on the pricing and the options, that was a huge move. So if we can just get some stability, maybe a little bit of downside, uh, you know, that that's really going to help our position. And we're just going to battle this one just like we have before. Keep in mind, I mean, we were, we, we've been through this before. If we look at, uh, you know, oil, for example, uh, let me get to the continuous contract. Uh, oil, oil, oil. There you are. Um, I mean, sorry, I've got a bunch of writing on here because I was I did a video on it. But I mean, look at this move in oil to the downside and then to the upside. So a huge forty percent decline and then a fifty-seven percent climb from that bottom, and we came out profitable on this trade. Did it take us longer than we wanted? Yeah, sure. I mean, it took us several months to roll and extend duration and do that. But that's the power of staying mechanical, and we can do the same thing in bonds. Bonds are not going to go up forever. You know, when we were in this downslide of oil, it, it felt like, oh my gosh, oil is going to zero, right? <laughs> and then next thing you know, V bottoms and shoots up 50, 57% from the bottom. And so, you know, you've got to just stay mechanical. And, and the key to this is keeping your position size small enough so that you can withstand those massive moves. So, you know, even though bonds is a big move, um, you know, it's, it's nothing compared to what we saw in oil and we, and we got out of that one profitable. So we will continue to stay mechanical and, uh, and manage our way out of this one as well. Next trade was opening trade in EWZ. So just looking to sell some more premium in a diversified symbol. Uh, went ahead and did that. We got a spike in IV uh, up to, well, it was at 57 percentile at the time we put this on. Let's take a look at EWZ now. You can see, let me just go back to the three month daily. Okay, so here it is. Uh, IV just slightly higher than where we put that on. Price is pretty close to where we put it on. Dead centered, just holding on to that, waiting for some more time to pass. Next trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we opened up a new weekly iron condor in SPX uh, when that was at the seven days to expiration. And, and at that point, we we're also still holding a weekly double calendar, which I'll get to in a second. But we still have on this weekly iron condor. So let's take a look at that. And oops, that's SPY. SPX. Um, here we go. So we're up, uh, we're up over a thousand bucks on the trade. We've got a few days left till expiration in SPX. We've got five. Yeah. So we'll be looking to take this off. What is that Wednesday of next week? Most likely. Um, and so we've got a lot of profit left here. So hopefully things can kind of stabilize a little bit. We just kind of ping pong around within this range and, and can book a profit in that. The, uh, the other one that I mentioned, the uh, weekly double calendar. That one was really frustrating because we had that on. It was dead centered. We up, we're up a decent amount, but remember, we're staying mechanical with these things. We're waiting till we get down to about a day till expiration. And what happened was on this day here, this big down day, uh, we, were, we were pretty well centered here and just had a huge move down, moved all the way past our break even. Break even. So we ended up taking a loss on that trade, uh, which is you know, really unfortunate. Obviously, we got to bounce after that, but that's after the options expire. So you can't trade in hindsight like that, saying "what if." But uh, it was frustrating because we were dead centered, had a had a lot of uh, a lot of potential profit, and it moved out of our range, and uh, so we had to take a little loss on that one. But that's okay. Overall, on the weekly trade, still doing just fine, and uh, and that's the power of kind of laddering these on 
as price moves around. And and with implied volatility as high as it is, uh, I mean, we're getting big credits. I mean, we've got a three uh, over a $3,600 max profit on this just because implied volatility is high. Now, if you've noticed what I've done is I've actually moved these, uh, the long put in a little bit to lower our overall buying power uh, requirement just because when applied volatility is this high, it's going to take a lot of capital and it doesn't really shave off much as far as your overall probability of success, probability of profit, uh, but it sure lessens your uh, buying power requirement if you just move that move that, um, you know, we like to do these at the 10 Delta, but the 10 Delta was like the 2750 and it was just a considerable amount of buying power. So we just moved that in about 20 strikes. And, uh, and so that's what we're doing here. Next trade closing trade. So here's that, uh, here's that, uh, weekly double calendar. I just mentioned, we got that huge move down. Weren't able to, to book a profit on that one, but, uh, we, so we're out of that one at this point. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in GS, Goldman Sachs. So we were just uh, rolling our long put vertical. And we did this from September out to October. Now we did this out to October with 64 days, which is a little bit outside of our wheelhouse. So that's 30 to 60 days. But when you have a directional position on and you're just trying to extend duration, uh, I don't mind going a little outside of that. And it just helps diversify our overall time frame from the different positions we have in our portfolio. So we we're over 50% of max profit on that. So we just wanted to lock in that credit, roll it out, extend duration, and keep that short delta in our portfolio. So if we look at GS, it's up a little bit today, along with the rest of the market. Um, but what we're at, where we're at in GS is still within range here. And so we're just looking for some more downside to benefit that. Uh, speaking of short delta, we are... We, we have short delta, but we are a little bit under our one-to-one -one ratio. We like to be kind of in that one-to-one, -one, up to five-to-one on our short delta to theta ratio. And we're, uh, we're a little bit lower than that one-to-one. -one. So we've, we added a, a short delta play today, which I'll get to here in a second. And we'll just continue to massage that, uh, that ratio as we go along. Um, but, you know, big bounce today in stocks, S&P's up over a percent and a quarter. And so it looked like a good point to add some short delta. So I'll get to that here in just a second. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So very similar to what we did in GS, uh, except in this case, we just stayed in the same September cycle. So again, we're just kind of diversifying our time frame. And, you know, September still has 36 days. So all we did was we is we adjusted our strikes down a few strikes. So we went down from 85.80 down to 82.77 because we were well over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. So we just locked in that credit, rolled our strikes down closer to price and kept that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So if we look at XLK... Uh, here's where it looks like. So it's moved up a little bit since we did that roll, but price still within range here and just looking for some more downside. Uh, the reason I chose the strikes that I did, sometimes when I do these, these rolls on these vertical spreads, I get the question, well, why did you choose the strikes that you did? And when we do this, we're really just trying to get uh, at least or right around a 60% probability of profit. Now you can see price has moved up since we did the roll. So now it's at about 56, but right when we put this on, if you put your price slice on the break, even that probability of profit will, will show about 60%. And that's why we chose the 8277 strikes that we did. So that's the plan. We just want to have a positive theta, uh, higher than 50, 50 probability of success and, and let those probabilities play out and keep that. It's, it's more of a directional exposure trade though. You, we're just trying to keep that, that short bias uh, in our in our portfolio overall. Next trade and final trade was that short bias trade that I told you we added today. And we did that in XLF. Uh, I like financials lower for a couple reasons. One, you know, financials tend financial stocks tend to do better go up when interest rates are perceived to be going higher. Uh, interest rates are perceived to be going lower, which is going to potentially hurt financials. Now, how much of that is already priced in? Well, that's the magic question. We don't know that yet, but uh, I just thought it was prudent to get short XLF, get short some financials, and it acts a little bit as a hedge against bonds. So, 
you know, if interest rates are going down, typically bonds are going up. And if interest rates are going down, typically XLF or financials are going down. So just using it as a little bit of a hedge and just wanting to get short financials. And so we use the ETF XLF for that. Uh, this one was pretty much a 50-50 uh, trade, just a real directional bearish trade. And what I did is I just, you know, XLF is such a, a low price symbol. It's in the 20s. So you could have just bought a put, as I put here, but we went with the put vertical for positive theta, you know, assuming the position moves in our favor. And we just did a wide, uh, you know, it's only a $5 spread, but in a stock in the 20s, that's a pretty wide spread. And so uh, it's almost like synthetic short stock, you can think of it. Uh, but the upside and the downside are capped. So that's where it was here. It was about 50-50 when we put it on. It's moved up slightly since we did so, but just looking for some downside uh, to benefit that trade. So that's the plan in XLF. And, you know, I just, I like this when you get this big push down, we've got a little bit of a bounce higher. Uh, I'm looking for stocks to potentially roll back over again. I don't think we've seen the bottom. Uh, again, that's my opinion. Nobody knows, but you know, that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're, we're still going to see lower prices. All right. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with oil. We've got a short strangle in oil. Let's get rid of these theoreticals. Click on our actual position. Uh, and with today's up move, uh, we've got a decent profit in here, but almost 450 bucks out of a potential 1440. So just looking for a, maybe a little bit more upside, a little bit more theta decay before we book a profit in oil. Uh, in ES, we've got this long put vertical here, uh, where you can see price is pretty close to where we rolled this. And so just looking again, looking for some more downside, uh, to benefit that trade gold. I mentioned natty gas. So we've got these two different positions in Nat Gas. Uh, you can see had a big move up in Nat Gas, which really helped yesterday. Uh, we could definitely use a little bit more, uh, but just kind of playing that one mechanical, hoping for uh, some stability in Natty Gas so we can get back to profits in there as well. Went over bonds, wheat. So this one, uh, man, we had this huge move down in the grains uh, this day here. Um, and, and so now we've, now we've got stuck on this one, which we will just take off into next week. We've got, yeah, just seven days. So next week is expirations and week. So we'll probably just close that out next week. And then we've got this other piece in wheat as well, which is out in the October cycle with 35 days to expiration. And that's a full iron condor and that one's doing good. So just holding on to that and waiting for some more time to pass there in Apple. We've got this long put vertical here. Uh, after Trump delayed the tariffs, we had this big spike in Apple. Uh, but then it's kind of come back down, and we're just looking for some more downside to get back into range on that trade. DE, John Deere. Uh, we held this one through earnings, and and so it did move higher. It's up over 3.5% today, but still in good shape here. Uh, and we were looking to potentially take this one off or roll it if we got a little bit of down movement, but we did not. So we're going to just continue to hold. And, um, and so that's where we're at on DE. DIA, the Dow, we've got two different sets of short call verticals that we've just, just been keeping for that short delta exposure. You can see they're well within range, just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit those. EEM, we put on this short delta play uh, last week, and this is just simply a long put. Um, and so just, just diversifying our strategies. Uh, you know, we don't do a ton of long options just because you do have that theta decay working against you. We bought these at around the 80 delta, so really deep in the money to, to really try to minimize that theta decay. Uh, and it was down. We were profitable a little bit. Now it's come back up. And so just waiting for some more downside to benefit that trade. And we've got what, 35 days? Yeah, we're in the September cycle. We've got 35 days there, so a lot of time. EWZ, that's, I already showed that one. Goldman showed that one. Intel. Okay, so this is one that we've we've rolled a couple times. We're really close. In fact, I think we're probably around break even overall after adjustments. And so just, just looking for to gain some profit here. Now, what we'll do on this one next week, we've, we're still, we still have 35 days to expiration, but... 
you know, when we get to a point like this, we're well over 50% of max profit. We're not going to hold this one all the way down to 21 days to expiration. Uh, but we're, we're trying to get out with a profit. If we take a look at the chart, you see the applied volatility had a big contraction today, which helped the position. Um, but assuming implied volatility stays high next week, we'll probably roll this one out one more cycle and try to uh, try to try to get to profitability before we close that out. Uh, but pretty well centered here. So got a big range for this one to move around in. If, if implied volatility does continue to contract into next week and we get a little bit of a bounce higher and, and we're in a profit here, even if it's just a small profit, we may just take it and, and run. Kind of depends on where we're at with the rest of the portfolio too, but that's those are kind of the, the uh, two things we're thinking of next week. We're either roll out to the October cycle or just book it if it's profitable, uh, but we'll see where we're at next week. IWM, we've got an iron condor here. Uh, price is sitting right here, still well within range. Got some profit, just waiting for some more before we take that off. I mentioned IYR, MasterCard, MA. Got an iron condor, pretty well centered here. Just waiting for some more theta to decay, some more profit in MA before we take that off. Netflix, this was a short bias trade that we put on. Uh, we're close to a point of taking this off uh, a couple days ago, but... Uh, we're waiting for a little bit more. Price uh, gone, has gone up today, but still well within range. Uh, really just holding this for that short short delta exposure. Hopefully, if we get a little bit of a move down early next week, we can book a profit on that one. QQQ, very similar to DIA. We've got a couple sets of short call verticals. Just looking for some downside to benefit those. SMH. Uh, SMH is coming back nicely for us. So we've got two sets of adjusted strangles. This one is dead centered and pretty similar to Intel. We're, we're not going to hold this all the way down to 21 days to expiration. Uh, but you know, if we get some more theta decay and, and we're in good position here, we'll just roll this one out to October and keep that, uh, keep that trade going. You know, we're still down on SMH and so, uh, an implied volatility uh, it's still decent, so we're going to continue to stay in this trade and uh, and try to collect some more profit before we before we get out. And the other piece here, uh, again, pretty pretty similar, um, and and so making back some good profit in that piece as well. So just holding for now, but we'll look to roll at least one of those maybe next week, and then maybe hold this one until we get closer to that 21 days to expiration. SPX I mentioned, SPY, so we've got a, a short call vertical here, pretty close to where we rolled it to, just waiting for some more downside to benefit that one. And then VXX, we put on this short call vertical spread as implied volatility spiked. It did spike even further after we put this on. We put it on on this day here, and then a couple days later, we got this another spike, and it hasn't quite come back down into range yet, though. Uh, but if implied volatility continues to contract, that's going to benefit this trade. Uh, so just holding on to that at this point. I mentioned XLF and I mentioned XLK. So that's it. Those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Look forward to another great week of trading next week. Have a great weekend. Talk to you then.